Right, terrible news for London. Oh wait, did we not rest? Before... Uh, doing this? The death of Aloysius Dawson, head of the Dawson Empire, occurred last night at around 4 a.m. One of his manor's chambermaids found him in his bed this morning, bathed in his own blood. She immediately reported the incident to the police. A number of Mr. Dawson's household staff are currently being interviewed, but a clear culprit has yet to be identified. Born in the city, Mr. Dawson, okay, he was a man of vision. He saw a glistening future for a crime-ridden capital. He saw the ways through which our families and friends could be protected from the dangers outside. He saw how we, he himself, as a man of wealth and influence, could use his fortune for the benefit of the people. I plan to turn the city into a fortress where the virtuous could live in peace. Sadly, this idea attracted the jealousy of others, and they did not let him live long enough to enjoy the fruit of his dedication. Mr. Dawson leaves a daughter and many admirers to mourn his, his death. Okay. Uh, is that it? Doesn't... Actually, we didn't kill um, the other guy, so... Fair enough. Whitechapel has sunk deeper into uh, hostility. Uh, the Pembroke Hospital is okay. Well, it's in serious condition, but it's critical. It's not terrible. Also, are we gonna ever get new um, districts? Because I don't think it's just these four that we have. All right. So now we got level 28 activated, which should make this much easier to do. Did these guys respawn? Easy does it, boys. Uh, we can deal with this first. Come here. Oh my goodness, why do I have nothing? Okay. Come here. Come here. Oh, okay, kill him. Heal. Alright, took care of you. Now, can we please enter this? Nope. Of course we can. Oh my goodness. Let go. Is there one other person somewhere? Oh, yep, this guy. Please let us enter this theater. My god. Okay, let's see. There, There's probably something we can pick up. Oh! What is this? McCollum's report. 11.06.18. Okay, so November... I'm guessing that's... Oh no, that's probably 11th June, 1918. 
I just finished reading Doris, Doris Fletcher's journal, as painful and dreadful as it was. My god, the woman planned to see everyone in London afflicted by infecting all who would come to her next play. It helped me understand greatly what's going on. Doris Fletcher's real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of some Harriet Jones, who has been treated as a patient for a long time at the Pembroke Hospital. She clearly hated her mother, but used her fame and notoriety to see, to see her while visiting the poor and sick in the East End. I don't know exactly what happened then, but this is how her mother infected her before returning to the theater, and how she turned into that monstrosity that the leech known as Jonathan Reed finally defeated. The presence of that vampire in the same hospital where Harriet Jones was treated can be a coincidence. I'm convinced he is deeply involved with the vampire plague going on in London right now. I'm also convinced Swansea is his accomplice and that those two are planning something more terrifying than anything the guard has ever faced. Maybe I should take some time to read the old books and manuscripts the guard still possess to get some answers. It may prove useful. In the meantime, I better send some patrols to investigate about what is occurring at the Pembroke Hospital. And then two days later... It took me two days to parse through the dusty registers and books we we keep in the vault. God, I hate losing time like this. The search did prove fruitful for once. I found two pages that could be related to our present situation in a copy of William Marshall's memoirs. I took them with me to read more carefully. This creature Marshall says he fought in 1666. This disaster that aimed to destroy London it is very similar to what happened with Doris Fletcher. Disease, infection, hate of the living a desire to see the city ransacked. I have no doubt now that the bloody old leech of William Marshall is behind all this, and that he is back. This could be our greatest accomplishment, if the guard could at least find and destroy that old bastard. I believe what Marshall did in 1666 is exactly what Reed is now trying to do. Did the creature this disaster escape their will? Is it why Marshall destroyed him in 1666 and Reed did the same with Doris Fletcher before she became such a creature? I don't know. But those two are clearly working together and Swansea is helping them. I will immediately give orders to have them arrested and interrogated. As for Reed, I'll destroy that evil beast myself, and then we'll deal with William Marshall and this disaster thing. Prewin will prevail Doris once Fletcher more. Doris Fletcher was about to become okay. a disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence. Ooh, we got a theater stage key. Which I think is what we needed to uh, enter this area. Whoops, what is this? Spring and some screws. Alright, perfect. We don't have the theater stage key now anymore. I'll tell you. Ah, more of you. All right, come here. Bite him. Alright, that was probably a waste, but I don't think we're going to need it necessarily. Ooh, what do we have here? We got a safe, it looks like. But that's locked. Okay. Ooh, blood. Alright, William Marshall's memoirs, okay. The, this is a long one, actually. The Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole finally agreed to meet me in London. They, they proposed to meet inside the new cathedral of St. Paul. I like the wit and solemn, sol solemnimit, wait, solemnity of all these men. What a symbol to choose the place where I defeated this disaster, but also the place where I fell. I agree to the proposition. There, in the sacred silence of the church and under the eye of God, they respectfully listen to me. They acknowledge my victory against the evil creature, the dust astro, the eater of stars who only wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will to save London in 1666, they heard my request, my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate promised to come back to me with an answer. The primate of St. Paul wrote back to me with just a name, the Tear of Angels. I imagine that's Tear, not Tear. According to him, this ancient artifact could heal anything, cleanse any blackened soul, and purify my blood. Blessed be the Lord, it took me more than a hundred years to find a cure for the blood of hate, but I may finally have found it. Soon the rage shall end. Soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the nece necessary ingredients to create the artifact. Blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of a king. To find such rare ingredients is now what worries me the most, for time is on my side. It's the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. I'm afraid we're literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote. But if that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes, I am ready to endure this excruciating pain. Blood of a pure heart. Garlic. Blood of a king. I don't understand. Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. 
I had better keep that in mind. Okay. I cannot enter. Still can't enter. Because we didn't unlock anything yet. Um, okay. I don't think we actually explored this area. Oh. This is where we're supposed to go. And there's Edgar. Swansea. Edgar, can you hear me? Jonathan, is it really you? Easy. Easy. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. Don't try to spare me. As a physician, I know all too well when it's too late. Punctured lung, broken ribs, internal bleeding. An accurate diagnosis, wouldn't you say? Edgar, what happened? They wanted me to confess. Beat me black and blue. Jeffrey McCollum ambushed me at the Pembroke Hospital. He was convinced you and I were responsible for the Skull epidemic. I never imagined that self-righteous fanatic would dare to attack us in the open. What b became of him? To prove him wrong, I let him go. Yeah. Really? Are you sure that was the wisest course of action? I mean, it made sense. Time will tell. The most intriguing part of his accusation was that you and I were the pawns of some ancient vampire. William Marshall. Yes, they... Uh, they tortured me to make me confess the same nonsense. I mean... I don't know. I trust you, Edgar, but the guard of Prewin is onto something. What do you mean? William Marshall, for example. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Jonathan, I cannot say I'm ready for another round of questions. Why would the guard of Prewin believe you and I created the vampire epidemic? Maybe due to our profession? Because I offered you shelter in my hospital. Or maybe it's something else related to William Marshall. What can you tell me about William Marshall? Not much. History paints the story he was the greatest knight who ever lived. Amongst the immortals, he had a yet greater legend. Why would he deserve such a reputation? I cannot say. The Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole has next to no intelligence on him. All I know is that he's supposed to be the oldest of all the British vampires. Why is the guard of Prewin so obsessed with him? He was the only ancient vampire to escape the first great hunt launched by the guard of Prewen in 1854. They believe he's an evil creature plotting his return. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to do. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. Nothing at all. I mean... Do you remember when we suspected Sean Hampton of killing Harriet Jones? Yes. The terrible episode that came as a shock to us all. Harriet Jones faked her own death. When I found her in the sewers, she confessed she wanted everybody to pay for what happened to her. That woman was extremely bitter, full of hatred and festering anger. Do you know Doris Fletcher's real name? No. I'm afraid not. Her real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of Harriet Jones. 
What do you want me to say, Jonathan? Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Miss Fletcher once came to visit the sick. That is all I know. No, Edgar, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. What does this sad story have to do with us? Because we treated her. We treated uh, Harriet. Do you know where we are? Doris Fletcher's theater. This is where that hateful creature plotted to spread the epidemic across London. I only briefly met Miss Fletcher once when she visited the Pembroke Hospital. You say it was to see her mother. She seemed like such a sweet and graceful woman. My point exactly. The disease turned her into a bitter soul, driven by vengeance just like her mother, a symptom of all the infected patients. Certain diseases are known to produce similar effects. Rabies, for example. And rabies is not the devil at work. Come on, Edgar. Don't you see the pattern here? The epidemic? The link between Doris and Harriet? The suspicion of McCullum? How could I? I never saw Harriet Jones again after she fled the hospital. Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear, I'm at a complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. There was no evil that's, plan, yeah, no well, that's diabolical the problem. plot. You did what? I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? Lady Ashbury's. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, I also kept samples of her blood for my research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar, that's unethical. You betrayed two of your patients at the same time. Right, I admit it. I boldly ventured into experimental realms, but I've killed no one to appease my thirst for knowledge, Jonathan. I'm no murderer. I never asked to become what I am, Edgar. You! chose to conduct your rogue experiments. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. Just another victim of this tragedy. I mean, we'll, we're not gonna have any hand in what happens yes, to him. Edgar, so. you're about to die. I won't say it's fair, but I can't say you don't deserve it. Your words hurt deeply, Jonathan. But they come from a friend. I... I helped you, remember? Yes. I remember. The but you also kind of caused the problem. In that bar, I knew we would accomplish great things, you and I. I thought you were a vampire, till you brandished that cross. I looked so lost when you opened that door. For a few seconds I thought you were there to kill me. I think we were both afraid. And now, I feel true fear. Is there an afterlife? What will become of me when I'm dead, Dr. Reed? I really cannot say, Dr. Swansea. <laughs> In the end, Life betrays us all. All right, we got a small key and Swansea's cross. All right, the district will soon suffer the consequences of your action. What consequences? What did I do? Destroy Harriet Jones, the source of the scale epidemic. All right, chapter six, which I believe is 
technically the final chapter in the game. The only thing aside from that is chapter 7, which is just basically an epilogue or epilogue. Um, so yeah, so that will conclude this episode of um, Vampire. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you on the next episode. Peace out.